Okay. All right, we are ready to start graphing parabolas. So we just introduced the word parabola. We just learned about the shape. Um, we know it's a function that is nonlinear, it's curved. Uh, we talked about first differences. We talked about the equation. And now we're going to learn how to graph a parabola. So what does that mean exactly? It means that our parabola can move sideways, left or right. It can move up or down. It can be stretched. It can be compressed. We can do a whole bunch of different things to that parabola. Okay, so now what I'm going to tell you, sorry, pause the recording. I can't remember where we had where I was right now. But what I'm going to tell you is when we're graphing parabolas, we're going to be using a shortcut. We are not going to be making a table of values. To make a table of values, yes, it's very accurate, but it takes a long time. There's something really cool about parabolas in that there is a pattern that emerges. And we can use that pattern to draw our parabola very, very quickly. So if you take a look at the equation y is equal to x squared, you're going to begin drawing your parabola at the origin, 0, 0. And then I've written on, this, on the bottom over here, there is a graphing shortcut, and it's called the 1, 3, 5 step pattern. So I just want everyone to put their pencils down and look up here so I can explain the 1, 3, 5 step pattern. OK, so what you're going to do is you're going to start at the origin. So I can just use that. So you're going to start at the origin. You're going to go one unit to the right, and then you're going to go up one unit. Then you're going to go one unit to the right, up three units, and make a dot right there. And then you're going to go one unit to the right, go up five units, and make a dot right there. That's why it's called the one, three, five, seven, five. You go up one, then up three, then up five. And whatever you do on the right, whatever you do on the left, you do exactly the same thing on the left hand side. Krisha? If the vertex was not on the origin, you would just start wherever the vertex is and then do the same exact spot. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to practice using this little trick that I've shown you on the graph right on the side. Um, we're going to graph y is equal to x squared. And the important thing to note over here is for this graph, our vertex is 0, 0. So we always first identify the vertex. <laughs> so I'm going to make a point where my vertex is. And then I'm going to use the pattern that I've just learned. So you're going to go one to the right, up one, and make a point. Then you're going to go one to the right, up three. So one, two, three, and then make a point. And then you're going to go one to the right and up five. So one, two, three, four, five, and make a point. And why are we doing this? Because it's a shortcut. We don't want to make a table of values every single time. We want a quick way to graph our parabola. And this is the fastest way. Whatever you do on the right, you have to do on the left. So again, go back to the origin. Now go one to the left, up one. One to the left, up three and one to the left up five. <coughs> and you're gonna notice your, your points should be symmetrical. So it should line up with the other ones. And then we're gonna connect all of our points. Now don't do what I did. It needs to be a nice smooth curve which I really am going to struggle with. Well, I'm just going to pause this. No, that's fine. I, I, it's just a freehand sketch. You don't use a ruler. Uh, make it as smooth as possible. My graph is definitely not smooth. I think you could probably make it a lot better uh, when you're drawing it by hand, but this is the basic idea. Um, make sure you put arrows on both the ends of your parabola and then make sure you label it as well y is equal to x squared. It's not always going to be one, three, five, and it's not always going to be at the vertex. So that's why this is called your parent function. Like this is a basic parabola, the one that we always start with. And now what we're going to do is we're going to apply transformations to it. So we're going to move the parabola to the left or to the right. And then when we do that, the vertex changes, we're going to move it up and down. And then we're going to do something called the stretch and a compression, which is going to change the step pattern as well. 
So like I said, we're not learning all of this today. We're just going to do a little bit of it today. Sophia? Yeah. This week. It'll be later on this week. Yeah. Samir? Um, I have two questions. Yep. So, <clears throat> are you able to get like six sunrocks or cars flat? I hear music. I don't know if so, that someone's music's on. All right. So you guys, this is our parent function. It's our parabola. And now, like I said, we're going to be moving it all over. Um, I made a chart to help you understand what exactly we're going to be doing. Now, don't let this confuse you. It seems very complicated, but actually, I don't really use this equation for calculations or anything. We just are going to be using logic. But I do want to show it to you in case it helps. OK, so you know how our original equation is y is equal to x squared? Well, we can do a bunch of different things so that y is equal to x squared, and those are called transformations. So I can put a number in front of the x squared, which is the a, letter A over here. I can put a number with the x, which would be inside the bracket over here. Or I can put a number outside of the x squared, which would be a number over here. And every single time I add something to my equation, y is equal to x squared, it kind of serves as a map. It tells you what the parabola is doing and where it's moving. Okay, so for example, vertical translation. Vertical translation means the parabola is moving up or down. So it's physically moving up, physically moving down. And in your equation, that's going to be a number that comes after the x squared. So for example, if I had x squared plus something or minus something, that number tells me how much my parabola is moving up and how much it's moving down. Okay, so we're going to start with this transformation first. So go to the next page where it says vertical translation and let's practice doing that. The giraffe isn't just cute, it's meant to tell you that it's you're talking vertical, so you're looking up and down like a long giraffe neck. Okay. So again, y is equal to x squared is our original parent function. And now we're going to be adding or subtracting a number to that x squared. So I have given you two examples. y is equal to x squared minus 4 and y is equal to x squared plus 2. In the first example on the left, can you see that negative 4 is now a new thing? It's not just y is equal to x squared, but now I'm subtracting 4. And in this example, it's y is equal to x squared plus two. So those numbers we are now adding on. What exactly does it mean? Well, when the number is negative, it means our parabola is moving down four units. And when it's positive, it means our par parabola is moving up two units. So we're going to do it one parabola at a time. Let's look at this one over here. If this was a regular old graph, then our parabola would start at zero, zero. But because we have this minus four, where is our new starting point going to be, Krishna? Good. We're going to be starting four units down. So the original is at zero, zero, but our parabola is moving four units down. So I'm going to start at zero, zero. I'm going to go one, two, three, four units down. And that's going to be my new starting position. So what is the vertex in this question? Sophia? Well, yep, we need a point. So we're going to say zero comma negative four. Remember I said when we're graphing, you always want to begin with the vertex. So, and, and I don't use the equation or anything like that. I just use logic. I know there's a negative four here. That means my parabola is moving down four units. My vertex is at zero, negative four. Have I lost anyone? It doesn't make sense. It's okay so far? Okay. Now, starting at this vertex, we're going to use the step pattern we were using before. So I'm going to go one unit to the right and up how much? One. Then I'm going to go one unit to the right and up how much? One, two, three. Good. Then one unit to the right and up five. And then do the same thing on the other side. Value. All right, so I made a mistake. There's actually a spot at the bottom for you to write the vertex. So hopefully you guys found that uh, rather than I. Um, I made a nice smooth line. I made arrows on both ends and I also labeled it. 
because I'm repeating that so much, you guys, if you don't do that on an assessment, for sure, you're going to lose marks. So make sure you have arrows on both ends and make sure you label every single problem. Okay, that's just basic graphing like rules. Um, so make sure you don't lose marks on that. What do you notice about this trend, this parabola? So if I were to ask you, describe it in words, what you would say, and mathematical language is very important here. I don't want you to say the parabola moves down four. I want you to say it is a vertical translation four units down. So that word vertical translation, I already wrote it on the sheet for you. Vertical translation is a very fancy way of saying the parabola is going down. But I want you to use these words because that's the proper math language. Okay, let's try another example of vertical translation. So in this example, I have a, I have positive two. Now, usually our vertex starts at zero, zero, but this positive two tells me I'm moving up two units. So my new vertex is going to start right here at zero comma two. Good. You can clearly see that a vertical translation only affects the vertex. It only moves the vertex up or it moves the vertex down. Nothing else changes because from this point, now I'm going to go one to the right, up one, one to the right, up three, and then one to the right, up five. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And you can take your time with this. Three, four, five. Uh, make sure you count carefully. Make sure you're really careful with this. So you guys, how would I describe the transformation that's occurred to our parabola of y is equal to x squared for this question? Safir? Yeah, so you, the proper math words are vertical translation. That means it's moving up two units up and that's it. Um, also, what do you notice the difference between this graph, the pink graph and the blue one? Well, the pink one moved down four because it was a negative four and the blue one, blue one moved up two because it was positive two. Besides the vertex, is anything else affected? Is the step pattern affected? One, three, five, nothing else, okay? So vertical translation is only gonna be moving your graph up or down. Report. Okay, so we have very successfully now done vertical translation. We know that's what it looks like. The second transformation is a reflection. What does reflection mean? First of all, in an equation, um, if you have a negative sign, so let me highlight this with maybe blue or something. If you have a sign over here that is a negative, or if it looks like this, that means it is a reflection in the x-axis. So a regular parabola looks like this. However, when you have a reflection, it's going to look like this. Okay, um, I'll write that one more time over here. So if you had like a regular y is equal to x squared parabola, and I'm pretty sure you can't see that, so I'll move it over again. It would look like this. But if you have a negative sign, a reflection, it's going to look like this. So that's how you flip your parabola around. You just make sure you have a negative sign. The way you're going to describe that is we're going to call it a vertical reflection in the x-axis. And what that means is, this is how I describe it. Imagine this is your x-axis. It means you're taking your parabola and you're reflecting it this way. So it's like you're vertically flipping it along the x-axis. So if it opens upwards, you flip it, it's going to open downwards. Okay, how, how are we going to graph that exactly? Well, it's actually very straightforward. So here is what the, oh, why can't I move it properly? Here is what the equation looks like. You can see that we have this negative sign that we didn't have before. Um, what is the vertex going to be? Do we have anything weird happening? Like, is there any number after the x squared? No, so what's our vertex? Yeah, it's just zero, zero. The vertex is not changing. Nothing is, nothing's happening there. However, our parabola is now going in an opposite direction. So here's how you're going to think about it. You're going to go one unit to the right, and then you're going to go down one. 
You're going to go one unit to the right, and then you're going to go down three. And then you're going to go one unit to the right, and you're going to go down five. So all that changed was the direction in which we're drawing our points. Instead of going up, now we're going down one, down three, down five. Still the same step pattern, one, three, and five. So on the left-hand side, one to the left, down one. One to the left, down three. Four, five. One to the left, down five. Oh, that line was so beautiful. It was like perfection. <laughs> and the way, if you have a negative sign, the way you describe it, I already said it. We want proper mathematical words. So if you said, oh, it flips over, you're not getting any marks for that. Um, if you say anything else, you have to use the word. So I want to see vertical reflection in the X axis. Highlight that, asterisk it. Just make sure you know those are the words I want you to use. All right, so I'm going to pause the recording here. This recording will have to be in two different parts because um, we're going to stop our lesson here. Just to recap. Here is what a regular parabola looks like with a vertex zero, zero. And we've learned two transformations. One is a vertical translation where you attach a number outside the X squared. And then the second is a vertical reflection where you have a negative sign. Tomorrow's class, we're going to finish up with the other two transformations, um, which is on this page. Then we're going to put everything together. So this is what our goal is to be able to graph something with everything. And then we're going to learn to answer a couple of questions. So that's all going to be tomorrow's class. Okay, I'm going to stop here.